and people were making fun of me ki budhiya chali hai medal ji but i again took assistance of education i took uh, mental training i was with a psychologist both psychologist i met a nutritionist i was taking the right diet to compensate all the bleeding of the menopause so um and then what was it i made not just one award two awards well at 46 i won a medal a rio para olympic medal at 47 i won a padma shri and after winning two medals at the age of 49 and creating my third consecutive asian records i went on to win the khel ratna so um so that's what i say it's very easy for us to use an excuse by saying that there is gender inequality there is um, uh, there is a bias um, there is a lack of opportunity women are not there in the leadership roles i think when a woman stands up and says she believes in herself and she is willing to learn and educate herself that definitely will uh, ensure that she breaks this bias so today i i want to from this platform make an urge that if we want to see equality if we want to see more and more women in the forefront whether it is this education whether it is the sports we have to make an effort to ensure that they get educated because that is the biggest rule so when we say beti bachao i was just hearing the panel discussion of how important it is uh, to uh, to bachao the beti and then the second part is aapne bacha li aur ghar mein daba li aur use sapne dekhe ki shakti nahi di usko aapne padhne ka mauka nahi diya to phir wo bachi hui beti bhi kisi kaam ki nahi reh jayegi wo isi dakya usi samaj ka ek daba hua abla hissa reh jayegi so beti padhao is another part maine bhi apni beti bachai apni beti mere maa baap ne pehle mujhe bachaya फिर पढ़ाया फिर मेरी बेटी को नुकसान हुआ मैंने उसको बचाया उसको पढ़ाया और आज हम दोनों मिलके वी आर सेटिंग एन एग्जांपल, वी आर द ओनली मदर डॉटर डू इन द एंटायर वर्ल्ड हु प्ले टुगेदर इन पैरिस एंड विन मेडल्स फॉर द कंट्री सो दैट इज हाउ वी कैन बैटल दिस होल सिचुएशन ऑल वुमेन विल स्टैंड अप फॉर ईच अदर एंड एनकरेज ईच अदर uh to come forward to be each other's wind beneath their wings so that is what i want to express from this platform oh my god i i think a uh, ma'am inspiring words uh, especially in the moment where we are facing uh, a tragedy i think this session at least i would say i feel so much motivated brilliant alpesh sir Dr. Deepa Malik, thank you very much. Any questions? Any questions for me, sir? Thank you very much. On behalf of 39,000 gynecologists, it was very inspiring talk and a, a great message never to give up. And happy Mother's Day. Thank you. And I think this is Hello. another. Uh, another opportunity for me to say a huge thank you to the world of gynecology because if this medal is won by me a lot of credit has to go to my gynecologist dr reema uh, from rnr hospital was taking care of me trust you me i was bleeding 15 days a month and i was training and my training session used to be 14000 kgs in one hour 70 80 kg lateral pulley pull oh. so which meant i had to do 10 pulls into 10 sets and so similarly by the time like a bench of 40 kg uh, five repetitions into 10 sets so like this a dumbbell of a 15 kg uh, 15 repetitions into 10 sets so by the time i would come out of my gym i would have done almost uh 14000 kilo weight at the age of 46 at the time and her body was undergoing total hormonal changes um 
I was getting hot flushes. I was getting uh, sweats in the middle of the night. I was irritable. And I was not supposed to have hormones because we have anti-doping tests and any hormonal disturbance, any hormones given to the body are not accepted by the WADA, which is the World Anti-Doping uh, uh, Association. So she really kept me um, with the help of multivitamins. With the mul she was very, very careful uh, not to give me any, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, a forbidden kind of a substance and yet she kept me in good motivation so I think um, uh, uh, other than of course I have been a mother twice <laughs> so uh, I, the biggest uh, gift that I have today in my life are my two daughters and uh, thanks to a gynecologist who helped them come into my life and at the same time this medal this medal was another delivery of my life which has changed the life for us. And a lot of credit goes to a gynecologist for this also. Thank you so much. And also to you, ma'am, for just not giving up on anything that you wanted. What a great story. We can go on and on and on listening to you. Thank, Thank you, you ma'am. Thank you for taking your time out and joining us today. Thank you very Thank much. You. Wow, with that amazing, uh, inspiring, motivational speech here, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. We will quickly move oh, on and uh, now I would like to introduce to you our next speaker, uh, Dr. Samarina. Uh, Dr. Samarina Kamal is a chief consultant, ops and gynae in Alam Hospital, Rachi. And she would be uh, speaking on the forbidden red, menstrual taboos, cultural constraints and rights of women in India. A warm welcome to Dr. Samarina. Welcome, ma'am. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Alpesh Gandhi, sir, for giving me such an opportunity to talk on this platform. And what an inspiring talk by uh, Madam De uh, Deepa, uh, a story of human resilience, a story of bravery, of courage and palate. I'm totally bold over them. And I have also witnessed some personal tragedies, but uh, I'm feeling elated listening to your story. And uh, I now felt uh, with uh, so much of vigor and energy to face the challenges of life. Um, in this uh, platform of Beti Bachao, Beti Parhao, uh, I have two adolescent girls um, and when they started menstruating, uh, they would have so many like uh, myths which they had imbibed from their friends, from, their, uh, from their grandmother and uh, then I would say that see, uh, this is a normal physiological phenomenon mm, and uh, then my post, my postgraduate uh, is it okay? My postgraduate students, my postgraduate students would uh, say that okay, we are pregnant and we are not able to do this duty. Then I would say okay, take it easy. Uh, but then, uh, uh, it is also a physiological phenomenon. So today, this has become an oft-repeated jargon in my household. This uh, menstruation and pregnancy being physiological phenomenon which has to be taken as such and not to be made an issue out of it. So and today I'm so happy to share with all the adolescent girls Pan India about accepting their menstruation as a normal form of femininity and vitality. Now starting my talk. The forbidden red menstrual taboos cultural constraints and rights of women in India. Culture and menstruation is about cultural aspects surrounding how society views menstruation. Menstrual taboo is any social taboo which is concerned with menstruation. In some countries, said the experts, menstruating women continue to be viewed as contaminated and impure, often restricted and forbidden to engage in activities like 
cutting water or cooking, attending religious and cultural ceremonies or other community activities. When combined with the stigma and shame that women and girls are made to feel during that time, it is truly disempowering. The experts add that allowing rest periods has an impact on school and job attendance, thus affecting women's economic participation and advancement. The experts argue that a global shift in cultures is needed to respect menstruation, acknowledge it as a human rights issue and eliminate discrimination, shame and stigma too often associated to it. Now menstruation and menstrual hygiene are emerging as pivotal issues for gender equality, human rights and development. In many parts of the world, menstruation tends to be a taboo topic, surrounded by silence and shrouded in myths. While some people are still reluctant to discuss it, menstrual hygiene has proved to be a powerful entry point to raise broader issues around gender equality and women's and girls' empowerment. Sir, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. ma'am, we can hear you. Yes. Okay. Uh, is the slideshow being uh, shown? Slideshow? No. no, it is not visible, madam. Okay. Uh, there is one screen share uh, okay. below. You, you have to click a screen share. Okay. Uh, then select your presentation there. Select a screen share, then active window. And then your presentation. So, this one. Yeah. Or it is okay, madam. Like uh, you, you are deliberately. Yeah. Now it is coming, no? The slideshow? Yeah, it is coming, coming. Okay. Um, no. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> Dr. Samarina, please make it on slide show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing that. Slide show for banana. Go down, madam. There is, there is one icon, there are three icons below. The first icon is... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, sorry for the problem. So, menstrual taboos and cultural constraints. Culture and menstruation is a cultural aspect surrounding how society views menstruation. Menstrual taboo is any social taboo which is concerned with menstruation. In Madam, some countries... Go to slideshow, upper, uh, upside, slideshow. Uh, uh, still oh, not and, uh, slide and, then slideshow. And Dr. Samarina, do, uh, no need to repeat because we were all already listening you, though we were not looking at the slide. Okay, we, fine. Okay. But we have listened you, so you start from the slide where you oh, have... Yeah. Now the slideshow is seen, no sir? Yes, yes sir. Yes, yeah. yes. yes. Inside, is one, inside design, animation, then slideshow. Design. Top, side, top ribbon, madam. You can you can use phi f phi f phi. Okay, fine. Yeah. So menstruation is a sign of female health and vitality and can no more be shrouded in fear, shame, or embarrassment. With this in mind, the countries must aim to eliminate all forms of discrimination against women, including discrimination based on social norms surrounding menstruation that harm the physical integrity and human rights of women and girls. Now, mycology, how women got their periods, a very interesting story. And any story that has a curse, Indradev has to be a part of it. So Guru Brahaspati got furious with Indradev and taking full advantage of their fight, 
the asuras attacked devlo now lord brahma advised him that he has to serve as he is to get his kingdom back as per brahma's advice he found a sage and started serving him day and night but to his luck the sage's mother was an asura and so he was favoring the asuras now indra got very angry and he killed the sage so he was very much scared now because now to his problems was added a slaying of a brahmin now lord vishnu came to his rescue no, 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 no. when he was, uh, he prayed did a meditation and prayed to vishnu and he told that his burden of course can be divided among four things water earth uh, trees and poor women so one fourth of the curse came into our pandora's box of trouble and the curse was transformed into monthly periods but along with the curse came the blessing of procreation and thus we became superior to the males so but surprisingly in many hunter gatherer societies particularly africa we see that menstrual observances are viewed in a positive light without the connotation of uncleanliness now we have to break the taboo now taboos an afghan girl says she cannot attend school during that time a nepali girl says i can't attend a religious function a bengali girl says i cannot play sports and so on and so forth now cultural constraints pertaining to menstruation as i said during the hunter gatherer days menstruation was not empty but everything started during the vedic period the brahmacharya number one con cultural constraint celibacy must be practiced all these are the references no running exercise or household activities i have quoted the vedas and all had to do that excess of physical exertion leads to prakritik dosha and hence was hazardous to the health of women no bathing or being self adorning activities reason was too full menstruation was said to be associated with austerity and again that imbalance of doshas which would cause health problems segregation in the, that period it was self explanatory because they did not have sanitary napkins so to manage the menstrual flow they had to be segregated to avoid embarrassing situations but this taboo has to be dealt away with now restrictions related to food the purpose was to protect the health of menstruating women coming to the restrictions relating to performance of religious and spiritual activities including visiting temples angirasa smriti is the reference and they said because of two problems uh, they were told not to visit the temples during menstruation because they had to maintain the spiritual energy of the temples because of the menstrual gandha somehow it was interfered and protecting the menstrual women from tedious religious rituals to protect their health now according to a study by dr jasmin gujarati et al which interviewed girls from urban and rural background she noted that out of 798 girls interviewed only 14% followed restrictions on cooking restrictions on touching others sitting on the same bed and applying makeup was also followed just by 10.9 5.6% and so on but adherence to menstrual restriction was highest with respect to religious practices like not participating in religious activity 41.6% and not visiting temple in 47.6% only 3% said that they just did not follow any restrictions the practices need to be seen not as oppressive restrictions being imposed on them but rather as some sort of therapeutic prescriptions and for this there should be informed consent and we should impart decision making to the girls so that they have to be decide, they have to be decisive which culture constraint is to be followed and which has to be nailed into the coffin as lord krishna in bhagavad gita says even a little practice of dharma saves one from great fear so menstruation attitudes tradition versus modern in modernity menstruation is presented as annoying and avoidable physiological process accompanied with physical uneasiness and mood swings the western term on the rats is so much used and contrary to this hindu tradition promotes a positive notion asks women to perceive menstruation as a period of rest austerity and self purification now as you can see in this hoarding they are bad from entering the temple premises now religious views on menstruation islam says let the girls who have attained puberty women in seclusion 
and menstruating women go out, that is to the Eid prayer, and witness goodness and the gathering of the believers. So Islam does not consider a menstruating woman to possess any kind of contagious uncleanliness. Most Christian divisions do not follow specific rituals or regulations related to menstruation. Now women's rega right regarding to menstruation. The entry of menstruating women to Sabri Mala was being hotly debated. While traditionally strongly believe that any change in custom is unthinkable, feminists have declared open war against the anti-diluvian practice, raising the slogan, happy to bleed. The four Vedas never state anywhere that a woman's body is impure and that she cannot do pujas during menstruation. There was a particular yajna, yagya, which was to be performed both by male and female, which was to be done for 40 days. Means they were allowed to do a yagya or religious ceremony during menstruation. So there have been many restrictions imposed on women in the past, but they are purely related to their health. Primary care physicians are the first point of contact for diagnosis of common menstrual problems. And so he has to be acquainted with the common myths related to menstruation prevailing in his or her community and to treat the individual holistically by addressing them. Many of the practices during menstruation have direct implications on reproductive health. For instance, not bathing during menstruation can lead to reproductive tract infection and it has to be dealt away with. It is pertinent to follow a strategic approach for combating the myths and social taboos associated with menstruation in order to improve the reproductive health of adults and girls and women. So first and foremost strategy would be to spread awareness among the adolescent girls. Community-based health education campaigns would also prove worthwhile. We need to spread awareness among the school teachers because they are the guiding force other than the mothers. Dr. Samarina, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Uh, we've got another five minutes to go. So uh, uh, kindly request you to kindly finish in five minutes. Thank okay. you very much. Government sorry of that. India has approved a scheme to improve menstrual hygiene for 1.5 crore adolescent girls by distributing low-cost sanitary napkins. Now, conclusion. Thus, it is becoming clear that multi-sectoral approaches are needed to combat the menstrual taboos. Menstruation is nothing but a very normal biological phenomenon and adolescent girls and women should understand that they have the power of procreation only because of this virtue. Thanking you with the slogan, happy to bleed. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Samar. Thank you very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with that... Uh, Ma'am, you'll have to stop sharing the screen uh, yeah. once you do the stop sharing. Yep. Thank you very much once again. Thank you. That's All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's quickly move on. And now it's indeed a pleasure for me to introduce to you a lovely, beautiful speaker, Dia Mirza. Ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, Miss Asia Pacific 2000 Femina, Miss India Asia Pacific 2000 is none other than Dia Mirza. Well, she has been involved with Cancer Patients Aid Association and Step Septic Society of India and has worked extensively with the government of Andhra Pradesh to spread HIV awareness, prevention of a female feticide, beta, cry, and most recently, the NDTV Grinathon. She is on the board of the Coca-Cola Foundation that works towards development in rural India. Not just that, she is also associated with campaigns such as Sanctuary Asia's Leave Me Alone and Female Feticide. She has been felicitated at award functions for her active involvement in social and environmental issues. Ladies and gentlemen, it will be indeed a pleasure to listen to her on and women and environment. Welcome, ma'am, a warm welcome to you. It's indeed a pleasure to have you here with us. And I would also request Dr. Nozer to join us as he's going to have a beautiful and interactive session with the gorgeous uh, Ms. Dia Mirza. Hi, Dia. Uh -huh. Hi, Doc. How are you? Hi, and everyone watching, happy Mother's Day. 
Thank you. We are so sorry to keep you waiting, but there's so much about mothers we need to talk about. And the two of us are going to speak about the mother of all mothers, Mother Earth. Yes. Okay. So when this pandemic happened, you know, I was just thinking that uh, we human beings have pretty much been a virus when it comes to Earth. We are apparently a virus. That's what the scientists have found recently. We've been based since Earth Day on the 22nd of April. And uh, just driving around Mumbai these days, we can actually see the skyline. You can breathe there better, so it tells you that things could be better, right? Absolutely. Um, while this is evidence of the fact that uh, human activity, the way we have urbanized, the way we've built our cities, the way we have industrialized every process, whether it is food or garment or practically every item of consumption, we have unfortunately also in doing so altered 71% of the earth's surface and that has its consequences um, and it has its consequences on human health and severe consequences on the environment. We've, uh, your grandchildren, our, our grandchildren, our children will be telling us now more than ever before how much they're learning about climate change um, and this pandemic is an outcome of uh, human activity, of because of the way we've altered the, the surface of the earth, the fact that we have degraded and disrupted the ecological balance, which is so fragile. We've uh, destroyed forests, we've destroyed ecosystems that support life, that support health, and that in turn supports pro progress. I won't get too technical on it, Doc, but I think what is essential for us to recognize in this time is that when human beings do give a pause or are more responsible, nature is a self-repairing system. She takes care of all of us and has the ability to fix a lot that is broken. And, and, and the perfect example that you've given as a citizen who is just experiencing the quality of air in a city that is one of the most polluted on the planet, 14 of the 21 most polluted cities in the world are in India. And all of these cities have recorded better air quality levels than they have in the last 20 years. Now, we all know, I mean, everybody who's a doctor here will know, and of course, all the audiences will know who are participating in this very important webinar, is the fact that when the air quality is degraded or any environmental damage is done, the consequences of that have to be borne by people. But uh, there's a lot that we can do. People are learning a lot of lessons and are actually recognizing the ways in which they can come out of this lockdown as better citizens, not just of their country, but of the planet and find ways to ensure that we can restore or hope to continue to keep the air cleaner and, uh, and, and, and bring back the natural balance that we need for our survival and health. Most importantly, our health. Thank you. You know, I, I read somewhere that the earth has music for those who listen. And it's obvious that you're a fabulous listener. <laughs> I was going to ask you whether we have gone past the point of no return. But thank you. you you've, you've given us hope. Uh, so, Dia, just to complete what, uh, what was done in your introduction, I have to say that what really impresses me is the fact that you are an advocate for the sustainable development goals. That's something we gynecologists understand pretty well that you are a goodwill ambassador for the UN Environment Program. You are an ambassador of the Wildlife Trust, the Wildlife Trust to forget so much more. I must tell you, for me, meeting you is always learning and breath of fresh air. So I need to ask you now, since we are the people who look after the health of women, and since women are half of the world, how do these changes that we have brought about affect the health? and the lives of women in particular. I mean, it's affected everyone. But women seem to have been particularly vulnerable. So, well, it's a proven fact, Doc, and I'm sure in your, in your experience as well, you would have, you will acknowledge the fact that 
when the air quality is poor it affects reproductive health when uh, the quality of food that we are eating is not good it 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 impacts human health at different levels and especially uh in the face of climate change when you're talking about marginalized communities you're talking about women who have to walk kilometers and kilometers just to collect a pot of water the kind of social emotional and physical stress that climate change puts on women is extraordinary so when we combat climate change and we actually find environmental solutions to bring back ecological balance we are in fact empowering women who and women are not um some i mean entity that have no connection to the rest of the world they are everything because they shape the the idea the future the understanding of not just the families that they are parent to but communities and societies and that's how we build the world and when we think about the sustainable development goals for me the most pivotal goal the most important goal in the sustainable development goals is climate action because if we cannot achieve um our this goal by 2030 we will not be able to achieve any of the others i'll give you a more i'll, give, I'll try and give you a more practical example of what i'm speaking about we've seen the kind of social economic disruption that this pandemic has caused we are also witnessing how this has affected women the most i'm talking about at every level um the domestic violence has gone up um access to healthcare is is makes a uh, women are most vulnerable in that situation now more than ever ever before we all know about how many women have been pregnant during this lockdown how difficult it has been for them to get access to just deliver a child in a healthy environment uh and while there are many who are fortunate there are many 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 who are not as fortunate so um it is impossible to achieve any form of progress for women if we do not recognize how fundamentally related environmental protection and climate action is to the health and the progress and the the life of women all over the world you know as a gynecologist in developing countries doc especially in developing countries so as a gynecologist i mean one fact we have not thought about a lot is since the lockdown about 2 and 1/2 million women have given birth in india there you go and you can imagine the situation and the fear and the compromise that would have had to be done to get them to be born and the other thing with you know to put it in a clinical setting you know we are gynecologists we are seeing certain abnormalities of the uterus that we have no business to be seeing something called a t-shaped uterus endocrine disruptors are in the environment they are causing male infertility they are causing female genetic problems and we are not doing anything about the cause we are only fixing the effect so what you are talking about is doing something about the cause so now the next thing i want to ask is let's first talk about women because a lot of women have locked into this particular discussion that we are having what can women do to protect themselves and their families you know let's take it down to the individual Absolutely. right Why, why I feel that there is a very big onus on industries, especially those that pollute, and policy and government, and they should actually take the largest part of responsibility. They have to become more active and more conscientious of the fact that health and environment are interlinked. there is no way we can achieve any kind of real progress if we do not acknowledge this full and final there's absolutely no question about it but what can we do at an individual level i share some of the things that i have discovered along the way doc because i can only speak from personal experience i was just like in most of us you know uh, driven by the work that i was doing obviously very consumed by it and while i was being an actor and a film producer and other things i recognized how little uh, people in the mainstream were understanding about what was happening with our environment 
so it really started off with my journey started off with championing the good work that people in environmental protection were doing and wildlife protection were doing and while i started engaging with them i recognized the amount of life change that i could make at a daily level it's led to some great action even at a policy level because when we did the beat plastic pollution campaign in 2018 which was the theme for world environment day we actually managed to get the prime minister of india to commit to making india single use plastics free by 2022 now the irony is that today the life saver is plastic the ppe the masks everything that we using so how can we be responsible i think it starts with managing our waste at home managing our waste better in every space that we occupy in the workspace and at home segregating waste e waste wet waste kitchen waste and dry waste we haven't even reached that point of refinement in our country where we can have more but i think medical waste is a very very critical part of waste management especially during this time and as people in the medical field you can do a lot by just becoming asking basic questions where is this going to go who is responsible for this and ensure you have the answers and make sure you're doing the full extent of the work required for it so for the last 5 years we as a society as a cooperative have managed to segregate our waste and have done it successfully it takes a little time to get everybody used to the program but people fall in line they learn and it takes some persistence um saving water a simple thing that we managed to do in our co-op doc was to install a water check meter in our tanks so there's never any overflow of water from the overhead tanks or the lower tank it automatically turns the tap you know the, the system off in a way where it manages the water level so there's never overflow otherwise there was time when hundreds of liters of water would get wasted simple regulations at a at a co-op level where during the summer months now of course we're going to be witnessing the harshest of heat and there is going to be a severe water scarcity issue um there was another report which i don't want to share right now which said that many of the cities one that we are living in right now is going to experience extreme water shortage and many cities are also losing all ground water so we have to do everything that we can if we can't harvest the water at least save the water simple things like turning the tap off while you're washing your hands or while you're washing utensils uh simple things like making sure your ba- bath is not more than 3 minutes if you cannot have a bucket bath and you're using a shower then make sure it doesn't last for more than one song the trick is play a song and make sure it's a short song <laughs> or if you want to sing a song you sing a song uh following a mostly plant based diet uh, it's a very american thing to say a lot of people perceive indians to be mostly vegetarian but that is not true even in india many of us consume and eat a mostly non vegetarian diet as well there's a large percentage of people who do that but we can bring down our carbon footprint and bring some kind of ecological balance at a personal level by eating more vegetables more fruits more uh, rice and lentils as opposed to um meat uh the other thing that i've managed to do is refuse all single use plastics and um and then i think once you just bring this awareness in of where is it coming from where is it going to go you start acknowledging all the changes you want to make in your life including what is the fabric of my garment how was it made you know is it uh, environmentally friendly consumerist behavior also reduces i find myself buying and wanting less of things than i did when i was younger you know so now it's not about getting the next new gadget in the market or the next new thing so maybe a lot like our parents were where you know or my grandparents were we would fix things and we'd reuse recycle upcycle the list is long as long as the intention is there a lot can be done <laughs> thank you because you you've just given us solutions and things people can do day to day and uh, well the glass bottles of water in my refrigerator are thanks to you 
and that's something I think everyone can start doing. So I actually made uh, traveling with your own water bottle a fashion statement. So we use this hashtag on social media called the hashtag traveling bottle. And now, Doc, I can't tell you how many film productions, television productions, people in my own industry have started carrying their own metal bottle or their glass bottle that can they, they can just refill and drink. That water, a filtered water is safer to drink than packaged waters. Great. Uh, you know, we often have this conversation, the two of us, and every time in our uh, hospitals use a lot of energy, use a lot of material, use a lot of disposables. And trust me, I, I now think twice when I use a pair of gloves, I don't throw them away easily. If I use one, I keep the other one for later use. I ask people, where do you put the paper? So we want some suggestions and maybe we can take this forward. Our president, Alpesh, is on this, on this with us. And I really feel that the we may be in lockdown, but this is the time to strategize. Could you give us some ideas as to what we can do with our clinics and our hospitals and our practice? One, energy, uh, use of stuff, disposables, patients in hospitals, you know, stuff like that to, to be more friendly to the world and the environment. And maybe going ahead, Foxy can work with you to draft a policy and share it with its members. I have... Uh, a, a policy draft ready and sitting in my phone which I'll be happy to email to you and you can share with the entire association. It's a, It was formulated in 2016 but it's just as relevant even today on how to manage biomedical waste. Okay. But I'm not going to get technical because I'm not a scientist. I can give you the access to the science doc and I will send this email. But what I can definitely say that at just a basic human level so long as our conscience compass is tuned into this reality that we must become aware of what we are consuming and how we are managing our consumption in our clinics. Who is collecting the waste? How is it getting segregated? Where is it going? Finding the end-to-end -end solution from the beginning till the end. So whether it is basic protocols that can be pasted within the clinic and working with your teams to educate them and help them understand that, you know, whatever we are using is going to go to the earth. And if it's not friendly to the earth, then it's going to cause more imbalance and ill health. We, we are not really being responsible. Then what's the point of being a medical person if, you know, we're doing a disservice to what provides us health and for free. Yeah. And, and it's also smart. I mean, putting a, a solar panel on your roof or uh, not being wasteful actually saves money. Yeah, not using too much electricity, bringing down your... If you're not occupying a space, turn off the means, turn off the lights. Just because, you know, it's a space that people come and go to, it doesn't mean everything has to be on all the time. Right. There's many, many, many things to do. And so, so Alpesh, you are on the co on this uh, conversation, and Dia is going to share that with us, and maybe we can put together uh, the material and 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 do something for our members. Last question: We are almost out of time, and it has to end with youth, because youth has such idealism, it has such passion. Uh, do you see a special role for youth? I mean, that young young woman who who uh, sailed across the, the Atlantic. I mean, do you think youth has, has, has something to offer in chanting the cause of environment? How can we use... You know, Foxy has a lot of young doctors, right? And they are amazing. So could we have a movement among the young Foxy doctors who are starting off their professional lives to do something special for the environment? Oh, absolutely. I think children and young people are leading the way. Uh, every single conversation, every single policy, every single change that has been implemented at an individual level, at a social level, at a government level, mm -hmm. children are championing this, young people are championing it. My parents, so I work very closely with Bitu Segal, who is the founder of Sanctuary Nature Foundation. He says there are only two political parties in this world. One is the Bacha Party and one is the Buddha Party. <laughs> and he said the Buddha Party messed up because we ignored the environment. But the Bacha Party will not because I think it's more evident now than ever before. And it's really unfortunate that our generation <coughs> has to experience the enormity of the imbalance that the environmental ignorance, 
the environmental i i will i'll just stick with the word environmental ignorance has caused us and i feel like you know my little nephew doc when we go to a restaurant and he orders himself a drink he says can i have some nariyal pani but please make sure you don't give me a straw because i don't use plastic straws this is a small example of change but it's big because we are not a drop in the ocean we are the entire ocean under a drop individual action accounts for a lot and i feel whether whether it's greta thunberg or it is aman and many other young children in our country who are a part of the fridays for future movement children in schools children from the kids for tigers campaign college kids everyone now is collectively recognizing that we have these 10 years this decade to act on climate and we have to become responsible for ensuring that every single citizen of this country who was ignorant to the action, the the effect of environmental degradation on our lives our health our future our progress has to be held accountable for share everything i just stick like to share with you that a few years ago one of our foxy presidents uh, dr narendra modi actually had a campaign where we though it was not something gynecologists do we did go out and have a campaign of planting trees absolutely that's the best gift to give someone so i have replaced all my birthday presents and anniversary presents with from things to trees i plant trees now the last one year the mumbai obstetric society my friend dr jaydeep tanks the president has given uh plants in organic uh, not even in pots in really organic containers so they are you know it's always fabulous and energizing to meet you and speak with you i always look forward to it. i read somewhere we don't inherit the earth from our ancestors we borrow it from our children absolutely my three grandsons i owe it to them to work on this issue we kind Not of in the future we have to stop looking at environment as a context in the future we have to look at it in context to the present today we have to act today somebody wants to ask a question is raising his hand Dear one, uh, Alpesh, would you like? Hi, Alpesh. Before, before we start, that's that's Dr. Alpesh Gandhi. Hi, Doc. How are you? The Fox. Uh, presidents of Foxy have such plans, and unfortunately, the pandemic stopped all his plans. But he's become an absolute champion, working on the issue and doing these kind of econ clips. So, Alpesh, your comments. Then, last words from the and we wrap up. I think the next speakers will. Dia, yeah, thank you very much uh, for accepting our invitation, joining the conclave, and speaking, talking on a topic which is we cannot say new, but relatively less discussed topic and something uh, very, very important. And yes, we agree with you that now at present, because of lockdown, we are the witness of a very clear air and uh, no. Uh, we are also witness about no traffic and no smoke and everything is good we uh, it looks like good when we are out uh, going to our hospitals uh, one more thing i would like to i am or we are also agree with you that uh, environmental ignorance yes it's a perfect word has caused a lot of damage to all of us and uh, as nozer has informed we have started to implement many things in our conferences and this year we have declared uh, e, uh we have declared environmental friendly conferences but unfortunately because of this pandemic we could not organize conference that's a different thing but already it is e conclave and everything e certificate and is going on uh, e registration but the one important thing i would like to inform you is that we have decided that foxy has decided uh, on this environmental day we are going to do a mass campaigning on effect of uh, toxins and air pollution on pregnancy and future generation so we would request you if you can help us in the campaign we will be very much happy and on that day we have planned we have decided to plant one lakh trees across india so this is what i want to inform you i think you will definitely like it and uh, at the end avan sir thank you very much but before you leave please do one more favor 
as uh, we have informed we kept one competition slogan competition and uh, please declare the slogan and names these are on the screen so this is the declare the prior slogan first prize second prize third prize and name and the slogan okay i'm going to try and see if the name is there i can see the slogan so should i start with uh, reading out the slogans yes slogan and side by there's a name also you, can, you cannot see the name no i can see oh, one second. Oh, now, I, now i can hold on i i can see happy mothers day my strength my magical mom my shelter in every storm very powerful slogan by manpreet kaur bijapur who's won the first prize <laughs> <laughs> now second prize this is from rajoria uh and the slogan is me proud mom of frontline doctors my little angels now corona warriors dr anita rajoria it's a it's a beautiful beautiful animation yeah. and the third goes to there's no name here but the slogan is mom the magician brought me to life Congratulations thank you dear congratulations, congratulations to all the winners and happy mothers day to everyone thank you for having me thank you dear thank you for being a champion of our mother earth thank and you. we are all there to support you we are all at the moment covid warriors but we will always be earth warriors thank you for being amazing all of you thank lots you. of thank you thank you thank Bye. you thank you very very much wow another wonderful session i have to say what a indeed pleasure so with that uh, uh, thank you dr nozer and uh, thank you uh, dr alpesh once again let's quickly uh, move on and let me go ahead and introduce our next speaker uh, dr jaydeep malhotra who is the president azar 2019 and uh, she would be talking on uh, managing uh, misogynistic men including beta parhao let's welcome a dr jaydeep malhotra welcome to you ma'am at the end of the, at the end of her talk we are going to launch one video of one minute sure and sir and the video is prepared by pregnant woman and complimenting gynecologist i'm able to share the screen what's that ka should be able to do it madam you can go down there is a one screen share option you you move your cursor green color option you will find screen share at the bottom yeah. in the center yeah correct started okay can you do it can do it Uh, you you open your uh, one second you down the side down down at the when is there one second it was all ready and i could see the hey yeah but that minimize was not opening so, you click it madam You want to rectangle? No. Full full. Let's see the game. 
Sorry, guys. Uh, can you see the screen now? Madam, it's perfect yes, now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, thank you, Alpesh. Uh, can you see me also? Because I can't see myself. We can see you, ma'am. Oh, it's okay then. It doesn't matter. Uh, hi, everyone. Happy Mother's Day. It's really been a phenomenal. Uh, a day it started so well and uh, you know i was just wondering um, alpesh thank you so much for the topic which you have given me i was absolutely totally overwhelmed in the last 24 hours you know trying to dig out so much information which is there on uh, this particular topic i'm sure all of us have faced it all our lives and i was looking for a perfect example and the more i dig into it i could only find one person who would really fit into this perfect example which is all over the place and that's none other than the president of us and if you go through it i mean the kind of uh, comments and uh, the kind of things which he has talked about every every woman on earth is just phenomenal including his uh, opponent in election hillary clinton now this is unbelievable and this is what we call as misogynistic approach <clears throat> let me just talk about women right now uh, women make up half of the world's population women make up almost 50% of the workforce in agriculture in asia and 80% of agricultural labor in africa 84% of the household chores are done by women and globally women spend at least twice as much time as men on unpaid domestic work four out of 10 households in the us are running only on women's shoulders 60% of them suffer domestic violence abuse of some kind and almost 100% have faced either sexism insult groping hatred and so on uh welcome to the world of man or the welcome to misogynistic world i want to really uh, you know i wanted to search on the word because what is it i actually had never paid much attention to it though we have you know all of us have gone through it uh, all our lives uh, so i was searching for the cambridge dictionary it said hatred dislike mistrust against women coming from greece and uh, but what really held my attention was this blackwell dictionary of sociology which says it's a cultural attitude of hatred for females simply because they are females now this is something which i actually have not really understood now <clears throat> wikipedia i was searching now when was this word coined like you know um, it, it's definitely is not something new and can you imagine Uh, the acts now can be dated back to almost 150 BC, where you know, in a Roman or in a ancient Greek uh, town of uh, uh, Tarsus. Now, our country, we always say, you know, women have been worshipped, but our country also has not been free from it. Can you imagine all the epics? We are looking, at, you know, hearing Mahabharata, watching it every day in the evening, and. we say oh women had a choice to you know choose their own husband but the swayamvaras were they really swayamvaras were the women actually given a choice no the this misogyny has been really deep rooted in our religious cultural literary traditions and actually has become a social system and it's an integral part of our ideology which is called as patriarchy Now, another very important aspect I want to bring to your notice is that even in the past, none of the men who were mis who had mistreated women were actually punished. But Sarupnatha was like Ravan's sister uh, when she gave her expression about you know her uh, liking for uh, Rama. Her nose and ears were cut. Now, this is something which I mean is happening even today in a very different form. i was actually shocked when i you know read this line na istri swan swatantrayam arhati now this is manusmriti 
Manu Smriti has been the biggest and the most respected lawgiver. Now, can you imagine Manu Smriti codifying a social attitude that has evolved many, many centuries ago? Let's move to the West. New York Times. How do the misogynist men look like? Can you see the boys behind? Look at these, this bunch of people. Now, Catherine Switzer who actually was a marathon runner. She was not allowed to run the marathon. It was only by 1972 when women were actually officially allowed to participate. Can you imagine? Now, what is this? It's all misogynistic attitude. We are still fighting. Sabri Mala is our latest. Women are not allowed. Why? Because God is, uh, gods are male and they hate women. When was God started being male and hating women? I actually refuse to understand. Now, when I went deep into it, I understood now the, do, the root cause of misogyny is patriarchy. And patriarchy is, you know, all over the world. Now, we are looking at very uh, rigid gender roles which are defined. Men will be rulers, strong, breadwinners. Well, women are supposed to be like weak, subservient and sensitive caregivers and they really don't require any uh, support. And this has happened all over. I am sure a few men will not agree with me, but uh, it is very, very rampant all over the world. Otherwise, women would not have been on the roads. And imagine even in the best of the world, uh, women are still fighting for equal pays. Women are, women are being abused uh, and, you know, uh, they are like objectification is there, shaming languages are being used. And when you come into a relationship, uh, all relationships are like misogynistic. These partners basically are typically, you know, displaying signs of micromanaging because you can't take care of your own self. I mean, this is unbelievable. Uh, women are actually incapable of being in control. They can't take even small decisions, even small. I have seen divorces happening because women cannot decide, you know, uh, where to which restaurant to go or which movie to watch. And it is a direct reflection of a superiority complex of uh, the misogynistic male. Now, if you are right, trying to challenge now uh, and you are looking at a change, I think uh, this patriarchy has internalized so much, it's going to be very, very difficult. But it's not a lost battle. There, there are ways of doing it and I am sure uh, if this has to change, the culture must change. And we need to start the conversation which already has been started. Now, uh, if you're looking at this kind of an attitude can actually have a lot of detrimental effects on the male partner. Now, the men who have this attitude are more liable to have, you know, um, uh, substance abuse and their Women in their family can actually have a lot of uh, consequences as poor mental, physical, financial, and emotional health. So what are we talking about? You know, uh, misogynistic uh, men will say men are superior to women. Now, the misa and rest women will say, no, women are superior to men. And But the feminist will say, oh, we are equal. Aren't we? We are all born equal. Now, the need of the hour is where is this discrepancy starting? And why did it start and where is it going to really end? The, we need to really introspect. We need to actually now dismantle this toxic power dynamic attitude which is there. We need to really become aware and challenge this internalized patriarchy which is there in our genetic uh, makeup now. Just a few uh, days back, uh, past the UN Secretary General was saying inequality is the world's biggest human rights challenge and we must push it back. And how do we really push it back? The first and the first most thing which we need to do is we need to transform the narrative. We need to dismantle the toxic masculinity and you know the prom promote fluid gender roles in which, you know, boys and girls are being raised independent of all this. We need to really nurture them, make them sensitive, make them ambitious, and make them 
have a positive attitude towards each other we need to really educate and have a conversation at with a very healthy background now is the change coming again the next very important question i would say yes you know why because if, if you go back to 2002 oxford dictionary actually revised the definition of misogyny they said the change it from uh, hatred for women to hatred or dislike of or prejudice against women now it's it's a very slow change but it is actually coming the next question people ask me and my you know my daughter and my son were asking can the misogynistic uh, men change i would say everyone is capable of changing only thing is that we need to be in the right direction and we need to handle it with a little firm um, strong appeal now for the women i would say that combating misogyny will really often require you to go against the very own people you are very close to it could be your father it could be your brother it could be your husband it could be your son but we really need to stand for the cause very recently i'm sure this congress uh, member of parliament was totally all over the place because she was mocked and insulted because of her and was body shamed actually and for what and uh, we need to really get up and rise to the occasion and be together into it the media is absolutely on the digital platforms are full of it now somewhere somebody has to stop and you need to retaliate now most of the time what happens is women keep quiet they they will not reply back and they'll think that it is going to die its own death it doesn't really happen like that but fighting a lone battle also can be very detrimental so we need to be really you know together into it you cannot ignore it you need to stand up on your own two feet with your eyes you know wide open and then ready to take uh, the plunge but where will we take the plunge now what we understand is that the governments the politicians the educationists the lawyers they all have to come together and stand for a cause but if i'm putting these pictures here these are zari court sexual harassment by mayor one of the politicians insulted a rape survivor and so on the stories are on and on and on now what do we really do i think that the government and all of us have to get together we have to get the laws the acts and the movements ready we need to get into you know implementing it properly and education and empowerment should not only be words because we, you know uh, i think foxy has been talking about uh education and empowerment from for many many decades we actually uh, got in beti bachao beti padhao in 2008 and we have gone ahead and with the movement in this the mdp app the pc pndt app of even when we faced a lot of wrath we have stuck by them the domestic violence laws the you know divorce petitions and even the sharia law recently now it is there are so many things forces acting on women you know making them inferior or making them uh, weak we need to put them all together so that they can just stand up and have that support in a lot a uh, year before last when i was the foxy president we did a women's empowerment huge meeting in kanpur where the president of india had you know graced the occasion and we had shabana azmi in one of our social programs and you know shabana at that time questioned because in one of the uh, school curriculum books uh, there was uh, normally when uh, women are, you know uh, children are reading what is mother doing mother is cooking what is father doing father is gone out to you know bring some basic so that bias in the mind starts from there and i would go ahead and say i'm running a program called adbhut matritva the bias starts in utero and we need to really change Bring the change. We should have emancipated, really understanding, sensitive people who are, you know, making these books uh, to understand that this can have an impact on the kids' minds. 
NGOs need to come together. I was searching the thousands and millions of NGOs who are working towards the rights of women, but they need to be together to it. They need to divide areas and then you know look into it. Azadi from my society. Now I had not even heard of it that there is an NGO which exists, and so we really need to work together. We need to make people aware that if you're going through all this, then this is something which we uh, have to you know. Uh, Face together. Very, very happy to say that when Nirbhaya happened, the whole nation and the media stood together. But it was thanks to that one mother, Asha Devi, and I'm very happy that you know she is a great friend of Foxy. We have actually adopted Nirbhaya and Sakshi as Foxy's uh, daughters uh, because we really needed to stand for the cause, and that is what we need to do together. Social media norms and policing is required. We have actually not looked into it at all, and uh, today we are facing the consequences of this, and that is something which we really need to do. This is there, here is this Donna Zuckerberg, who is you know Mark Zuckerberg's sister, who actually was you know has gone through the social media, and she actually was saying that it's a new level of violence which is there on the digital media, and we need to do some things. What can organizations do? especially where women are working organizations where women are working they need to recognize the problems at the workplaces they need to stand by the women they need to encourage them they need to get together and address if there any problems are there and expose the issues of personal harassment and all i am very happy and very proud of my organization because i know that our organization has actually been always behind the women and if you see i this so these are very small few pictures which i have put it together foxy beti bachao beti padhao then we had now today we have the slogan uh, which dr alpesh gandhi has actually gone in and we did beti bachao beti badhao and beti padhao and last year we had the slogan beti um, padhao beta samjhao because today we have understood that unless and until only educating the women is not going to help us we need to really make the boys understand now whose job is that how are, how are boys going to really you know understand that there is a dignity and respect which is required for the women because if it is not happening in their families it's not going to happen anywhere um sorry all men uh you know somebody said not all men are misogynistic but some more than the others was the reply which i got and that's an, it's an unbelievable you know phrase which i heard but that's true also in a sense that you know uh, we are always say oh boys will be boys and you know this is something which they they do all the time and uh, masculinity is uh, uh, not a state of crisis but actually masculinity is crisis and you know men hitting the men uh, the psychology is such it's like it's all about masculinity it's all about getting on top of the women in whichever way you know so that you can drive them whichever way but this is actually becoming very toxic and the many women who are not able to you know take this that's why our divorce rate is going very very hard So I would start with my last few slides and tell uh, what can we all do. We have understood the government, the NGOs, and the organizations, but men and women also have to do some things. So men, especially the men who really understand, can be a part of the solution. Men also need to understand. They need to speak up if they are seeing some of their colleagues, peers, or you know, their a family or sons who are. into this kind of an attitude they need to stand up and be champion for women as women have always there's always a woman behind a man so why can't be a man behind a woman in these and that's very important all brothers husbands you know fathers they have to stand up for the women of their families we need to point out whenever there's something happening against the women at that point of time to our friends we need to hire and promote women in the best of way and if you can really do it you boys i know that you have you know lots of these whatsapp groups which are there only uh, on your phone opt out of those boys clubs because those are the ones which actually 
uh, culture this kind of an attitude. And I'm sure I'm going to, you know, uh, ask Narendra if he's there on one of these, and he's going to get out of uh, these. I'm I'm sorry to interrupt, uh, Doctor Jyotish Malhotra. My surgery. Uh, Doctor Jyotish Malhotra. Stand up for the cause. I'm sorry to interrupt, ma'am. We've got just another two minutes to go, so if you could just yeah, wind yeah, up quickly. Yeah, I'm finishing. Thank my you. Thank you very much. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank so you. So, what do mothers do for the misogynistics? Now, stand up for your daughters. Never blame your daughter if she is not able to actually, you know, tolerate the attitude of any problems are there. Then, do stand up for your daughters. Don't send her back because the suicide rates are really going high. What can mothers teach their boys? There are lots of things, you know. Mothers are always very close to their sons, and the sons also listen to their mothers. So, beta padhao and uh, beta samjhao is something which is very, very important. So, we must really teach our sons. Here is my son, you know, who's cooking in this lockdown period. He's helping me all through, and understanding, you know, that all of us are working, and we need to really be. For each other, so we we as mothers can teach a lot of things to our boys. What can wives and sisters do? Of course, zero tolerance to any kind of abuse, form handling, injustice, and unfair approach should not be tolerated. And sons and brothers have equal responsibilities towards the household chores. What can fathers do? Fathers have to be role models. A son would only behave the way a father has been behaving with the women in his family. so that is something which i would really expect all fathers to do and that's very very important for all of us now uh, lastly uh, our, you know every day a talk has to change things we really need to stop saying to women you know lucky hai to abhi tere ko khana nahi banana aayega to tumhari shaadi nahi hogi tum dusri ladki ki tarah bilkul nahi ho what time of the month you know periods hai to different kind of treatment is given now that is totally unacceptable what should we not you know the things we should not be saying to the men or the boys boys will be boys now so they take it for granted that okay this is acceptable because they are boys ladkon se to galti ho hi jati hai i have seen many of these politicians you know commenting when the, all these rapes were happening um women also come and say sometimes kali ek haath se nahi bachti hai and blaming the girl now this attitude has to change and lastly i would say uh the personality of a child develops in utero and that's where the family and the mother has a huge responsibility the first thousand days in a child's life are very very important because that is the time when the personality and the health status builds up we have been running this program from uh, foxy adbhut matratva we have also launched an app called i moms today i moms is celebrating you know mothers day and uh, we had the walkathon we are going to have a concert uh, just later but we really need to understand that this foundation of the personality and the change has to start from utero so if you are looking at a change it's a long long time to come but yes be there be persistent and it will happen so i'd like to thank each and every one of you and uh, please keep on uh, bringing light to as many Uh, around you as possible and do join us for this concert at the end of the day uh, where we are going to have you know ma tujhe salam uh, a beautiful musical evening with richard james thank you alpesh for this wonderful topic thank you dr jyotishra thank you ma'am thank you very very much and yes um, uh, dr alpesh kandi has a very beautiful video that he's going to share with us now as he did mention earlier dr alpesh kandi has a very beautiful and a very meaningful video for all of us it's prepared by pregnant ladies to thank all the gynecologists so i think it will indeed be a very beautiful moment dr alpesh kanthi here
And after the video, ladies and gentlemen, we do have our panel discussion. So please stay back like any other panel discussion. Even this is going to be a very, very interesting one. We are still waiting uh, uh, for this very beautiful video that Dr. Avish Gandhi is going to share with us in a while now. And of course, after the panel discussion, we will once again have Dr. Pesh Gandhi and Dr. Jadeep Tank for the conclusion, for the consensus statement, Q&A conclusion, and of course, for the vote of thanks. And after that, we do have a very beautiful night, like uh, Dr. Jadeep Mahatra did mention. Uh, we've got a very, very interesting uh, musical moment that we're going to experience. I would say today's day has been brilliant and uh, is going to be brilliant. Whatever moments are left here with the e-conclave. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Foxy's vision here. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes. Did you listen? Did you see the video, or I should start? I yes, sir. You that. start. So you can start. You're waiting for that. You're waiting for that. Yes, sir. Okay, then I will have to. See. You will have to share the screen. screen. Uh huh. Already played. We have not seen it. So you will have to yes, share. Yes. Yeah. Screen. Sir, this is Amit speaking. Uh, now you forward it to me, and I will do the needful. And uh, uh, Dhoni. Yes. I, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We can go for. Uh, Sir. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the meanwhile, let me go ahead and once again talk. You are witnessing one of the most interesting Foxy's e-conclave, women's safety and empowerment, strengthening India's stand, Beti Bachao, Beti Vadhao, Beti Parhao, which is a Foxy's vision. We did experience some very, very interesting speakers today. And now we are waiting for a wonderful video, uh, which uh, I was told to believe that is prepared by the pregnant ladies for thanking all the gynecologists. So I, I'm, I'm sure that's going to be a very beautiful video. We do have to see that. And I did mention, uh, we do have another two very interesting sessions left. And after that, we have a musical evening that you will thoroughly enjoy. Dhwani. Yes, Dhwani, sir. Dhwani, let us continue with the panel. I am sending this video to you. Somehow it is not opening here. Right, Please sir. Panel, yeah, you send it to me, sir. Amit. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, well, friends, uh, I do promise you we're going to come back with the video and it's going to be a very, very interesting one. We are looking forward for that. But let's move ahead now with our final panel discussion, though it's a final panel discussion, but we've got two more sessions left after that. Uh, let me uh, talk about the topic that we'll be discussing in the panel discussion, which is women empowerment through education, self-reliance and understanding feminism. Let me go ahead and quickly welcome our moderator, Dr. Jadeep Tank, who is the Secretary General of Foxy. Welcome to Dr. Jadeep Tank. Welcome, sir. Let me go ahead and now talk about and introduce and welcome our panelists, uh, Dr. Nandita Palshetkar, who is the director at Night Bloom IVF Centers, Dr. Mary In. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, our next panelist is Dr. Ashwini Bhale Rao Gandhi. But she is a consultant, a gynecologist, a PD Hinduja Hospital and Hinduja Healthcare Surgical Mumbai, India. Welcome, ma'am. Our next uh, final uh, panelist is Dr. Neeta Thakre, who is a consultant gynecologist with special interest in urogynecology. Let me now hand over the session to a moderator, uh, Dr. Jedi Tank. Welcome to you, sir. Thank you, Vaitani. I understand uh, Anshul Tiwari is not joining us today. Is that right? Yes, he, he has not joined. Okay, thank you. 
So let me. Uh, Gwani, can you help me to start my video? It has been blocked from there. Okay. Till Deepa Ben's uh, video uh, starts, let me ask the panelists. I know that an introductory slide has been already flashed, uh, but uh, if I could ask them. Okay. I think we'll wait till. Uh, Nita's video starts. Okay, Nita, I can see you now. Yeah, I'm yeah. there. Okay, so let me let me go through the panelists once and ask them to introduce themselves. And I must confess that I'm quite intimidated by this panel. I'm obviously at a genetic disadvantage or a chromosomal disadvantage, if you will, <laughs> uh, over here, given that I'm the only one who has a Y chromosome in this panel. Uh, so I can can I ask the panelists to uh, introduce themselves? Particularly in uh, consideration of the topic, and that is a women's empowerment that we are going to discuss. Because I know that all of them have done considerable work on women's empowerment. And before we actually get into the panel, I'd like you to introduce yourself. The order in which I can see on my screen. So Ashwini first, followed by Nandita, followed by Dr. Mary Ed, followed by Nita. Is that fine? Ashwini, could you start, please? Uh, hello, uh, Jaydeep and uh, Dr. Alpesh. Thanks a lot for inviting us for this panel. And as Jaydeep has told me, introduce myself. I think uh, uh, I come from a family where uh, they always believe that uh, 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 men and women should be equal. And I was brought up in that way. And also when uh, in college and uh, later on also in uh, when I was in the medical college, uh, we have seen movements like you know, that time it was known as a Stri Mukti movement and the Stri Mukti Sangatana. I used to read those magazines, etc. And that had a lot of effect on my own thinking. And later on after passing uh, of Sakigad MD and then uh, when I was in Nair Hospital and then Vadia Hospital and later on when I uh, started doing active work in MOJS and Foxy, I ha had been uh, a person of Adolescent Health Committee and through that committee we have done a lot of educational programs all over India to empower girls and women. And in personal capacity I have written books for the uh, lay women and uh, I have done a lot of television programs and radio programs to educate and empower women. I think Jaydeep, this is enough. Thank you. Thank you, Ashwini. Nandita, please. And I can Hi. see your empowered husband also behind you. Hi, Hi. <laughs> so don't worry, you're not the only XY over here. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you're the beta padhaus, beta sabhava la XY. Okay. Uh, Jaydeep, uh, I've been the past president, immediate past president of Oxy, and uh, you know, <clears throat> I was born in an educational family which is devoted to education totally. We have universities everywhere which have 50% of the students are girls and we are mainly into I feel education gives empowerment and that's what it has helped me achieve. Today I am capable of running you know eight IVF centers and also uh, established last year the B for three movement which was making Indian women safer, smarter, stronger and that was really working in different areas of women's health and one of them was skilling them you know, uh, skilling them, making them uh, more financially independent and powerful. Because I personally believe financial independence gives a lot of empowerment to women. So I think I will wait for the discussion, but thank you very much. And uh, it's a pleasure. I think Alpesh, thank you for uh, having us on this panel. It's really interesting. Thank you, Nandita. Dr. Marian, please. Good evening, sir. Good evening to the president, sir, as well as our secretary, Dr. Dank and all the panelists who are here. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers who are here. And let me introduce myself as the immediate past president of Nagar Koyaloji Society, Kanyakmari Kamal Nadu. And I've been a Foxian, active Foxian for the past 35 years. And recently I had the proud privilege of uh, uh, getting the Women Empowerment Award from Foxy for the year 2019. With this, I think, I needed introduce myself more and let us proceed further, sir. Thank you, Marian. Nita? Yeah, uh, Amita Thakre uh, from Ahmedabad. 
born in a family where education was given very very uh, importance very very much importance and my father never uh, differentiated between b uh, females girls in the family from the boys so we were treated equally given equal opportunity he was a believer in education and uh, that's what gave me full confidence in my life and whatever uh, difficulties which i faced during my life time because of my development i uh, the way he uh, you know uh, helped us create our personality uh, i felt that that is the key to my success and i am trying to pass on that uh, key to those who whom i am coming in contact with like school children i do regularly school children education program uh, sex education program Green mm-hmm. empowerment program in various clubs and at my level and my capacity at our society level as well, and for Foxy as and when it is needed. So thank you, Dr. Alpesh and Dr. Jaydeep Tang for giving me this opportunity, and let's uh, start with the panel. Thank you very much, uh, Nita Ben. I'm going to share my screen now, and I hope that you can all see the slide. But the reason i ask everybody to introduce themselves their personal stories about empowerment is because i believe that stories are one of the most effective way of conveying a point and i think it's important that when you talk about uh, something which is seen as a catch on phrase you know empowerment people keep on talking about empowerment but what does empowerment mean and i think what empowerment means to different people comes from their own background comes from their own experiences and comes from their own culture and you will understand audience therefore that it's very important to understand where one is coming from so for example you know, there have been all these pithy phrases being said about women's empowerment uh, this one by timothy leary is an ex, uh, you know example women who seek to be equal with men lack ambition it seems i sort of agree with him i've grown up with uh, very strong female role models in my life my mother my sis- elder sister my wife and so on uh, but the question that occurs to me and i think the question which we always need to ask ourselves is what does empowerment mean at the end of the day does empowerment mean simply getting those who are on the outside of the decision process into the decision process is it a process that creates power in individuals in this case of women over their own life society and their communities and you will realize the importance of this question because if we can define what we mean by empowerment then we have something concrete to work towards so let's uh, let, let's go through the entire panel and ask me you the empowered women of foxy as to what empowerment means to you and please uh, you know remember the context over here uh, to a certain extent being doctors we are all a little privileged or a lot lot privileged and i think it's important to understand that empowerment means different things to different people what is empowerment to you may simply be uh, or what is empowerment to someone who is down on the social economic ladder might simply be a right to you and vice versa so let's start with ashwini again ashwini what does women's empowerment mean to you when you say you want women's empowerment what do you want what do you mean what are we actually looking towards uh, according to me empowerment means uh, the ability to take decision on your own and to ability to follow your uh, whatever you want to do according to your conscience and without getting any obstruction or if there is some obstruction that capability or the uh, power to oppose that obstruction i think this is empowerment for me and it may be in any field it may be in the field of uh, your day to day life in your field of profession in field of how you want to uh, develop or guide your patients so in all this we want the women to have that decision making power that they can do what they feel is right to do without any fear and without any obstruction so i should be fair all men essentially means that women should have their own agency 
and have the capability to make the decisions independent of anybody else is that is that a fair summary of what you said yes means they should not be say that because you are a woman you can't take this decision Absolutely. you are not capable so, of taking the decision you know we will so take they should be, yeah. so they should be capable of making decisions in a gender neutral environment yes yes, yes. nandita <clears throat> for me empowerment uh, is essentially the same thing but i feel that uh, education is a very very important part of empowerment because when we educate a girl she becomes aware of what are her rights you know she should nobody should take away her rights from her simple rights say right of education you know we had the landmark uh, uh, bill in 2009 august that right to education is free compulsory for children between 6 to 14 years and you see how many people are actually getting it not too many so i feel that our basis of creating an empowered woman to what you know ashwini is saying what is empowerment i feel the basis is education making her uh, stand on her own feet making her understand her rights what she is she should get and making her capable of earning her own living you know that will give her a lot of empowerment and lot of freedom to make her own choices sure so i think nandita uh, i think that's an excellent point and it sort of segues into the next point that we are going to make about education dr telvi i want to make a point that, no, nandita i have not finished i'm going to come to okay. marian and then come to you i'm just summarizing what nandita said and i think it is no surprise that coming from such a prominent educationist family uh, you have education uh, you know at the top of the list i also agree with you Uh, Maria, would you like to chime in here about what empowerment means to you? I'm not talking about the means to achieve empowerment, but what does empowerment mean to you? I feel, sir, women empowerment is not uh, like uh, overruling the men mm. uh, because always women are compared to rivers and uh, so soft we are. So what I feel is, women have to maintain their rights as well as their self-esteem with the support and the care of the opposite sex too. so sure. in this way they can establish their importance in the society as a very important and vital person for the whole family sure. as well as the institution where they work and for the whole world sure i think that's a very very important point it's not a competition where one gender is better than the other it's more about making sure that both of them are perceived and have the same rights and responsibilities neeta Uh, so to me the in 21st century's context empowerment means you are helping a woman to enable them to reach their highest potential by education by giving him her that confidence to understand what she is going into and take her own decisions she should be help to be financially independent and she should be help to be uh, helpful to their family in improving their quality of life and make a better decision for the whole family so when her role becomes very obvious then there will be inclusion of her as a decision maker in the family and that's how a woman can be empowered completely thank you thank you rita and you know having set the stage about what empowerment means to uh, different people in different cultures contexts uh, societies we'll now move on to the ways in which an em- empower uh, a woman can get empowered and over here i must say that uh, when we talk about education and women's empowerment is it automatic that education always empowers women we must Uh, understand that empowerment is it something that women must acquire themselves or is it ours to give i think that's, that's a very important distinction you know because uh, when you say that i would like to empower you to a certain extent aren't you also you know uh, playing into that my baap sarkar kind of a psyche i think that's that's i think that's an important question uh, for consideration women should be able to acquire empowerment rather than it being handed to them and lastly empowerment and disempowerment is relative to other at a previous time so for example what may be empowerment to uh, somebody else may simply be a matter of right 
to you. So therefore, empowerment is a process and not a product. And if we accept that empowerment at the end of the day is a process and it's not a product, then I think it's very important for us to understand how we can accelerate the process, how we can make sure that women go through the process the best possible way they can, and how this process can reach the maximum number of women. So uh, having said this, uh, I think Ashwini said this, that women belong in all places where decisions are being made. It shouldn't be that women are the exception. And I fully agree, Ashwini, with uh, your, your, your sentiments here. But let's talk a little bit about how we can uh, use education as an accelerator and a synergistic tool uh, for women's empowerment. So let's start with you, Nandita, over here. And uh, then we'll move on to the other panelists. All the questions will be directed to all the panelists. But we'll just, uh, we might alter the order in which we are starting. Nandita, please. Uh, Jadeep, you said whether women can acquire it or whether you can give it. I would like another word, mentoring. I think sure. it's important. We belong to a patriarchal society. It's been, you know, you, I don't know whether you heard Jadeep's talk, but donkey is yours. It's been happening and there's a mindset which is there which needs to be changed. So I think what the women need today is a helping hand. Believe me, Jaydi, women have fought all these years and so today I can sit with you. I am an empowered woman. I can talk and my duty doesn't end here. You know, everybody says, oh, poor, poor men. We have to start a men's club and all that. But I feel there's a lot. Yeah, don't laugh. But there are a lot of women in this world. You know, we are not talking about just a minuscule amount. But there are a lot of women who need help. And we women of today <clears throat> should not give up fighting for their rights. So <clears throat> I don't know what you feel like. You can say what you want. But I feel mentoring needs to be done. The women need to be given confidence. Because they've been subdued for very long. You know, the lower classes and all. So they need to know that they can achieve it. Look at even, forget the lower classes. Look at Fortune 500 companies. You know how many CEOs are there in that? Women CEOs? 5.6% only. Yeah. So I think all this needs mindset. So education is not the only answer. The mindset sure. of Women also, you know, I was going through the study, women and men tend to hire more men uh, candidates. So it is a change. Yeah, it is a change which is needed in men and in women to accept the fact that the women need to come up. They need a platform and maybe you give them a little extra rope. I may be being finished yeah. here, but I think... It's high time they're given that extra rope and they're given that opportunity to get empowered. Sure. Thank you, Nandita. I'm as passionate as ever. Uh, and uh, think that's a very valid and a very interesting uh, point of view. And I think what you're saying essentially is that uh, mentoring is something which is important, which is key. And I could agree with you more. And let's move on then to explore uh, not only the other panelists' thought on this basic feature of education and women's empowerment, but also how we can build mentoring into our education system. So, Ashwini, can you take the picture away, please? Uh, while I was listening to Nandita, I remembered uh, 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 like very important people like uh, Jyotira Phule, Dondo Kesho Kabe, who started the education movement for women. They have mentored women. No, yeah. Women they never were in a position to know that they need education. The, even I remember Dr. Anandibai Zoshi, whose husband made her uh, become a doctor. So there were always men who failed that women also need to uh, uh, come up and they need education and they are equal. And after this mentoring, I think now we are going ahead and we ourselves, we feel that we need education and empowerment. So I think we owe a lot to our uh, social reformers, the way they have taken our um, state and country forward. And they have given this vision to us to go ahead and get empowered. Thank you, Ashwini. I'd just like to ask, uh, can, can you still see my screen? Because I seem to have lost. Yes. Uh, yeah, the you can see. Okay. You can see it. Okay, fine. So we'll carry on. Uh, Dr. Marian, what do you think about education and women's empowerment and how we best build mentorship into education for women's empowerment? So as such, what I feel is 
education in today's era is much improved. Every family, every family member has been educated as much as they can and, and as much as they can afford. But what I would like to emphasize here is apart from the basic education and holding degrees and holding great positions, uh, three things I would like to stress is language awareness. We need to know at least three languages apart from the regional language. And that English and Hindi are must for the women of today. And second thing, awareness or knowledge about the law and the legal issues. Women need to know about it. And the third thing is women need to upgrade themselves to knowledge about electronic devices, online services, mm -hmm. and especially I would say women should know to travel alone and uh, they should know everything about online transactions, online tickets, and these are the things which I feel is the need of the society right now. Thank Just you very me. much. Nita? Yeah, so according to me, uh, as Dr. Namlita said, the mentoring is very important. And mentoring has three phases. One is uh, mentoring at personal development, mentoring at academic development, and mentoring at professional development. So at personal development, when you mentor, when you help a woman, she has increased in her self-confidence and her self-esteem. And at academic level, how can you can help? You can help them. Uh, help them to have a guide. Uh, guide them which course to choose, which branch to choose. What what can be a vocational, uh, you know, uh, skill that she should be developing to come up for and on for herself. So all these things are very important, and not everyone is capable of sustaining their education. So if you help them to have get some part-time job or develop some kind of skill sets, so as to you know have a better uh, financial stability while they are achieving their uh, academic uh, skills as well as the, and then for the future professional development and the whole ecosystem around the family around the school and in the society and the community, the whole three, uh, uh, you know, uh, ecosystem which is around female has to be very, very supportive for her development and her growth. And that's what is going to take them to a next level. Thank you. Thank you for all the panelists. I think what has emerged is quite clearly that Education is important, and education ultimately leads to self-reliance, and that self-reliance ultimately lead to a gender-neutral environment. Uh, remember, we don't live in a vacuum, and empowerment cannot take place in a vacuum. So I think the point which Nita made about uh, the society being supportive, etc., is also important. You cannot just work towards empowerment of women. You need to work towards empowerment with the society as a whole, rather than looking only at women. Uh, we were allotted around 25 minutes and we finished 20 of them and I will move on then to the last slide about understanding feminism. Now, this is actually for me a very politically charged issue. In these uh, times of being politically correct, in these times of uh, being looked down upon really uh, for saying anything which is perceived as being politically incorrect, I think feminism sometimes has taken on negative connotations yeah. you know it's like mm -hmm. i'm a feminist oh you are a feminist you know it's, it, that's not really required or something of that sort and i like what annie lennox says we all fight over what the level of feminism means but for me it's about empowerment it's not being more powerful than men it's about having equal rights with protection support and justice it's about very basic thing. it's not a badge like a fashion item I would say I'm a feminist, but a woman may turn around and say, you are a male, you are inherently privileged in the patriarchal society. So how in the world can you say that you are a feminist? And I really have no argument to counter that. So uh, starting with Dr. Marian, what is, according to you, what is feminism? Is it, is it that, you know, bra-burning radicalism? Or is it a much more subtle uh, kind of a thing uh, where you are, as Annie Denok said, it's about very basic things. It's not a batch like a fashion item. We'll start with Dr. Megan. What I would say is uh, you maintain your womanhood 
as far as possible and uh, as long as you can. And it is not something as to fight or win. You have to maintain your equality with equal support from the men also. And uh, I would not say that uh, you have to stamp your feet fighting for your own uh, issues or whatever it could be. But you have to maintain a state where you are equally accepted by the opposite sex. What I mean. Thank you. Nita? I feel it is not the word which we have, which is very important, but the sense behind, the idea behind that word, feminism, is very sure. important. What is more important, we have to understand it in a right sense. You, a female cannot be equal to a man, a man but she has to be given equal rights and equal uh, opportunities. She is a female. She has female hormones. She cannot be as strong as a man. But the opportunity given, if it is equal, then she is having all the capacity, all the potential to grow and be exactly same at the same level as a male. So if you give that, those wings to a female, then... Sorry, sorry Mary Kong could knock down a man. So again, this is gender typicality, what you're talking about. I'm, I'm talking about, well, well, that's I'm that's talking well, about the ma male hormones and female hormones. No, no, it, no. Don't talk about that. Ma'am, it is... I don't uh, it, agree it, 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 it is... Uh, uh, if I can finish. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, is, uh, yeah. it is the... Uh, you know, at, you don't have to show the power now. What you want to do just now is, uh, and in this era, we we are not ahead from men by just having that power. We have to be smarter, stronger, and we have to be very, very, uh, show our full efficiency. And that is when... You know, to come up in a society now, we don't need, in older times, we need to have on our breath by having that power and strength. The men, men had it more. But so, Nita, you are saying that a, a nuanced approach uh, to feminism is, is important. And I think what Nandita is saying, and I, I, I would agree with that, at, at this point in time, I would never tell a woman that you can't do something which a yeah, man can do. I mean, yes, exactly. I'd be afraid of being punched out of my lights, really. <laughs> uh, Ashwini and then Nandita. Um, I think uh, feminism for me, maybe a few years back when maybe I was not um, that much uh, mature, maybe with experience or education, I would have gone all out saying that you know, women are better than men. But I think now after certain maturity and when you go grow in life and you have seen the world, uh, you definitely will not say that uh, women are better, but we are all equal, yes. human beings. I think we should come to that level that we are all human beings. And just because someone is male or someone is female, we shouldn't be discriminating. And equal uh, justice has to be given irrespective of the gender. So I sure. think this is the way we have to go forward that whether men or women, we are all equal. And we have our own rights and it they should be respected. Thank you, Ashwini. Nandita? Uh, see, I feel the definition changes differently with different times in your life. Yes. Okay? Yeah. I totally agree that bra burning at that point was essential because we needed to make an impact. We needed to, uh, you know, shake the world that, come on, be at home. You know, it was too much. It needed to be shaken up. So at that point, that was good. But things as they progress, it's different. So today, what we, I feel what feminism is, safe, strong and smart woman. And let me tell it to you like how the men would understand it. You know, today women account for only 80% 80, 80 of our GDP of our country, which is the lowest in the world. And if the women were educated, were employed, given work, you will add $770 billion to the economy. And this is a McKinsey study. Okay, Daddy, I'm okay, talking your language. <laughs> so, so personally, I feel that, uh, you know, it's high time. It's high time that 
we don't have to fight for empowerment we don't have to fight so we need we women need to do that we need to start educating our boys we need to start educating our husbands that respect me because if that respect is shown in the family look your father respected your mother and that's how you adore her i think that is so important that the men of the family respect the woman give her importance give her decision making roles i think that will make sure that she's taking the decisions she's doing it then another point which are written is make her a leader and invest in women entrepreneurial ideas because you know the otherwise it's we have to change and emotionally and financially you have to invest in it uh, jb and of course unpaid labor is a big deal in our country and majority of the unpaid leader, labor is women i think these are some of the things that we really need to look at if we want to save feminism empowerment etc these are something very close and just ended by my usual statement safe strong smart woman that will be the woman of tomorrow sure thank you i think it's come out very clearly that feminism now has no longer got a single idea or a single thought behind it feminism is contextual like it so many cultural things in our life are uh, feminism means different things to different people feminism also means taking different actions for different situations there might be some situations where radicalism is indeed needed and is indeed warranted but most of the situations now thanks to all the great work done by feminists who is uh, is now a very nuanced conversation and i like what andy franco says my idea of feminism is self determination and it's very open ended every woman has the right to become herself and do whatever she needs to and i think that's a wonderful uh, aim to strive for and we hope that we will all reach there one day uh, we have overshot time uh, by uh, around 2 or 3 minutes so we'll stop now but nandita uh, about your point uh, about making women leaders let me tell you that in the last 5 years foxy has had more women presidents uh then we president so that is only in the field of gynecology <laughs> yes but Jenny. it's a start you thank you it was starting it again na huh? you are starting it again <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much i will turn it over to dhwani now and uh, uh are you are you there uh, uh, yes you have to stay back uh, dr jaydi but thank you have to stay with us and thank you to our panelists thank you very very much once again a very very interesting panel discussion all right uh, dhwani let us with... dhwani let us have the video and then i have one announcement and then we will have what up thanks sure. let us have the video first of Let's one minute बनके मैं खिल जावा इतनी सी है दिल की यार तेरी नदियों में बह जावा तेरे खेतों में लह रहा इतनी सी है दिल की यार है मेरी जमी अफसोस नहीं जो तेरे लिए सौ दर्द सहे महफूज रहे तेरी आन सदा चाहे जान मेरी रहे न रहे से भरे खलियान मेरे जहाँ झूम के भंगड़ा पा न सका आबाद रहे वो गांव मेरा जहाँ लौट के वापस जा न सका तेरी मिट्टी में मिल जावा गुल बन के मैं खिल जावा इतनी सी है दिल की हर तेरी नदियों में बह जावा तेरे खेतों है दिल की यार दिस वीडियो वॉज प्रिपेयर बाय ऑल दी पैगेंट वुमेन 
they themselves have prepared this video to compliment to convey thanks to all the gynecologists across india working in this difficult time of covid 19 so we are thankful to all of them and we wish all the mothers uh, happy mothers day now before we conclude there is one announcement i want to convey one good uh, thing is that today morning we had a walkathon virtual walkathon and our aim was was uh, 1 million steps and i am happy to inform you that we have made a india book record today morning and we have crossed more than it is, uh, exact figure will come later or uh, will come soon but it is nearly instead of 1 million it is near to 2 million so i am thankful to all the foxians who had done this excellent work in the morning 6 to 10 am they joined they uh, for this more uh, walk and this is for the first time virtual walk from in their on their terrace or in their homes or in their parking and they took the videos and they they, they count the steps uh, on the app and they took the screenshot and they upload the screenshots on the link of India Book Records. It, is, it was not an easy thing but our gynecologists, our members have joined and done this thing for our Foxy. So we are proud of them and with this uh, I, wa I want to inform one more important, uh, uh, interesting thing and that is very, very uh, good news is that today this e-conclave is attended by more than 42,000 viewers across India. Oh my God. Very good. So Great. our aim was 30,000. So now we have more than 42,000 and exit figure. Great will come to know soon. With this, I hand over mic to Jadeep and Sunil. Thank you, sir. For that, uh, uh, yes, yes, please. Yes, Jadeep. Congratulations. Congratulations, sir, for the Thank success you. of Mother's Day conclave. And uh, very happy to be a part of this uh, uh, venture. And you really you did a very good job, sir. We are so proud of you. Thank you so much. It's a great opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Marian. Thank you, all the panelists. Thank you, Alpesh Bhai, uh, Sundin, uh, Torrent. Uh, excellent work done and all the results are here to see. We have broken the record in the walkathon. We have probably also broken the record for maximum viewers at for a Foxy event ever. And congratulations to the entire team. I will now ask Sunil uh, to please give the formal uh, vote of thanks. Before we move on, I think there's a musical program already, isn't there? Yeah. Right, sorry. Yes. yes. Hello. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Jaydeep Bhai. Before before uh, we conclude, uh, there are there are several there are many words of appreciation that has come for this conclave uh, on the Mother's Day. The first uh, is Dr. Chawla, and she is appreciating uh, Dia Mirja, and she she is so amazed that she's doing so wonderful work. And uh, she also congratulate her for coming up with amazing point. Dr. Ma Narendra Malhotra suggests that we should cut the plastic bottles and make it to the bird nest and pots as well as plants. Mr. Dr. Primit uh, uh, Gaudana has suggested that carbon print to be taken very seriously by each individual. Niharika has uh, done thumbs up for uh, Nozer presentation and Dia's presentation. Uh, Sunita Yade has uh, uh, heads off to the Deepa Malik and there are many many more uh, appreciation words for the to, uh, uh, all the lectures today and for the panelists so it's very difficult to uh, take all these things but uh, it was a very wonderful program so with this uh, we conclude this uh, wonderful uh, and a unique conclave of Foxy on Mother's Day I on behalf of Dr. Alpes Ghari, Dr. Jaydeep Tank and the team foxy 2020 thanks all the speakers moderator panelists and the viewers and i again congratulate foxy dr alpes gandhi for uh, two uh, two world records not probably the world records but it is a foxy records or the india records where we have crossed 2 million marks so it is the double mark than what we have expected so thank you very much 
and i hand over uh, the webinar to the anchor Thank, thank you, you. Uh, thank you very much dhwani for making this webinar this e conclave very very live and interesting uh, uh, we enjoyed your anchoring and uh, we are thankful to torrent for all this support and uh, amit raj event manager everybody for the excellent uh, webinar excellent e conclave and everybody has enjoyed as well as mentioned we are getting you have started to receive many 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 compliments from across india and it is just because of support of all of you work uh, you all have done hard work so i am thankful to torrent uh, amit and rakesh mehta and all the team of torrent pharma and dwani thank you thank you very much for making this program very very interesting and live Thank you, Dr. Akash Kanthi, for having me on board. It's such a pleasure. You have such a beautiful vision in Foxy. How could anyone not be here? A very, very amazing, interesting, informative uh, session today. Thank you very, very much. Ani, you were able to stop the badi badi hasties of Foxy by telling them, "Sorry, time is up." Nobody else would have dared to do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think you selected her well. <laughs> But please do stay. back we have a very interesting uh, musical program lined up so do joy uh, all your presence your contribution your views uh, your speeches uh, has been so brilliant thank you everyone for joining us today i would like today. to have a last word if i can can i yes yes yes, yes. so uh, to conclude i would like to put up that let's make our world a better and equal for both men and women and let's do it all together thank you alpesh it was thank wonderful you. idea and I'm, i really enjoyed being a part of this conclave dhwani dhwani do you have some more lines <laughs> <laughs> no i can be quiet now <laughs> exhausted poor girl <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> almost six and a half hours more than that Yeah. Yeah. No lunch break. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it was so interesting. I had to be here. It's such a pleasure. It's a beautiful platform. I'm indeed uh, mesmerized by everything that I heard today. So thank you once again. Thank you very very much. Before, of course, we leave, uh, we'd like to thank uh, all the. covid uh, frontline warriors especially the women and the girls who are leaving their children their old parents behind to take care of the covid affected patients so thank you from the bottom of our heart once again a very happy mothers day on behalf of foxy ladies and gentlemen thank you for witnessing one of the most beautiful e conclave by foxy thank you and of course now we do have a, a musical program waiting so let me go ahead and introduce richard james who's going to now uh, entertain us online uh, another wonderful moment here by foxy i would say so everybody please join us in the celebration it was indeed a pleasure to have your time here today thank you this is dhwani with us signing off and uh, thank you dr arpesh kandi once again thank you thank you Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Nita Thakur. Thank you, Dr. Marianne. Thank you. The musical program uh, is on uh, another uh, link, uh, and uh, we will display the link. It is, and we are also sending the link to all on your WhatsApp. Okay, sir. Thank you. I think he was on Facebook Live also. Yes. Forty thousand viewers, fantastic! And that's still there could be even more. Wonderful! Congratulations, sir. I mean, you've done such a brilliant job. Thank you. This is one year. I'll be sure. You know, the musical program is going on live on Facebook from five fifteen yeah. onwards. So it's almost finishing. So let's you know connect with it because he's really singing very well. How let's to go ahead. Here. How to connect? Share the link here. here is the oh, please share the link. Can you, can, can, you Rami, Rami, can you ask can you ask someone to share the link on the right. screen itself yes ma'am yeah actually the link is uh, Jai, with uh, jay jay deep can you if ask you just Rami go to ravi ravi agarwal uh, page and uh, just share it uh, like you know just go to ravi agarwal
we can share the program and the link here Very nice. It's on the chat uh, here. I think uh, Dr. Tripti has shared. Oh wow! Yeah, Dr. Tripti has already shared. So please, I think it's going to end soon. Everybody, let's go and uh, let's enjoy the musical program. Yeah, you've been on for one and a half hours, so it's ending actually now. So let's go fast. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Thank you very yeah, much. Thanks. Have a good evening. Yeah. Good evening. Hi, Mehdi. How are you? <laughs> good, to, good to you. Ah, uh, ma'am, how are you? Mehdi, pal. Ah, maza aa gaya, Marian. All the ideas work. Hi, ma'am. 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 Hi